We break down the lineups and discuss the season ahead. But last night, it was late for you folks uh, on this coast. If you watch the Lakers and the Rockets, that was an interesting game. Uh, as most expected, Rockets won. Dwight Howard, not a fan of Kobe Bryant when he was a Laker. And the feeling obviously seemed neutral all night. You could see Kobe mouthing soft when he was covering Howard. Things escalated when Howard's elbow connected with Kobe's chin while Kobe tried to contest a pass. Words were exchanged and the two had to be separated. So how did you see that whole altercation with Kobe? What do y'all want me to say? Because I'm not going to give y'all nothing. It's stupid. We won the game. It's over with. I mean, there's no need to go into it. We won the game. It's about basketball. I mean, it's over with. You know what I mean, it's, not, it's nothing. You know, I'm not even. I'm not even focused on it. I think it's fantastic. It's the game. It's the game. It's all part of the game, man. Elbows are part of the game, and you know, trash talk is part of the game. I mean, it's. <laughs> you know, I don't know where the NBA became so sensitive. They don't like each other. Simple as that. You know what? I like Byron because he said it best. Uh, that's just that old school mentality when Byron was playing. They don't like each other. It's as simple as that. Stephen A., what was your take on what happened last night between Howard and uh, Kobe? Well, first of all, I think Byron Scott is absolutely right. They don't particularly like each other, even though Kobe Bryant will deny that because he doesn't want to give any credence to it whatsoever. And the word like may not be the appropriate word. I just think the heightened level of respect that Kobe has had for some of the dominant big men that have ever played in this game. He doesn't view Dwight Howard in that category, and it's just that simple. Dwight Howard uh, obviously is a bit sensitive to it. That's why he responded to the reporters in a very uh, terse and cantankerous way, completely unnecessary, by the way, uh, but it is what it is. In the end, what it comes down to is the fact that uh, if, if Kobe Bryant and Dwight Howard had bad, had a better relationship, uh, some could argue that Dwight Howard may have elected to stay in Los Angeles. As far as I'm concerned, if Jim Buss hadn't elected uh, to hire Mike D'Antoni and instead had gone the route of Phil Jackson, I believe that Dwight Howard would have stayed in L.A. under those circumstances. But in the end also, what it comes down to is that the Houston Rockets were a considerably better team than the Los Angeles Lakers and then highlighted what Jim Buss has not done and what he has not allowed Mitch Kupchak to do and what the Los Angeles Lakers as a franchise have disintegrated into because they have no help. Kobe Bryant has no help. Byron Scott has no help outside of Kobe. They don't have much of a team. If you look at this roster, ladies and gentlemen, the roster stinks. They're not impressive. And that's why Skip Bayless and myself have both acknowledged that the Los Angeles Lakers shouldn't be expected to make the postseason because Kobe Bryant in the last two years of his illustrious career in all likelihood is going to be languishing in misery because this team is just not very good. If it was a more competitive game, I don't think you would have seen some of that stuff that transpired. Certainly, Dwight Howard and Kobe Bryant don't have the best relationship. I've chronicled that on many occasions on this show, Skip. I even pointed out how after one game where TNT was calling the game, uh, Kobe had somebody go out and get Shaq. And Shaq came to the back room, and he and Kobe had a conversation where whatever friction or whatever it may be, uh, that was going on between the two was completely amended. Why? Because Kobe Bryant wanted to look the big fella in the face and let him know, I appreciate you now more than ever before, because that was at the time Dwight Howard was in a Lakers uniform, and clearly Kobe was lamenting the fact that he didn't have somebody of Shaq's caliber in the middle because he didn't think Dwight Howard compared to Shaq. That's basically what this is about. That's what this comes down to. They're not fond of one another, even though Dwight Howard and Kobe Bryant are not going to address it. It is what it is. But the Houston Rockets are a superior team to the Los Angeles Lakers, primarily because the Lakers stink more so than anything else. They just don't have the talent around Kobe Bryant. And it's a real shame that a star like this has to be subjected to this level of mediocrity. But that's Laker Nation right now. Before I answer the Kobe versus Dwight question that Kerry posed, I know Kerry doesn't want to hear this, but there is a sad but true about this game last night that the most interesting thing that happened was Kobe yep. versus Dwight. It's true. While in the big picture, the, the poor Lakers lost Julius Randle, their seventh overall pick, to a broken leg 13 and a half minutes into his NBA career. This poor kid, I, I hope this doesn't mean the rest of his career is going to be star-crossed. God bless him in his recovery, because that's just, that's just some bad, bad luck, news. man. Yeah. So that, that was the downside yeah. of this night. Kobe looked okay. I guess he looked decent for his age, and 
He scores 19, but they lose at home by 18 to a Houston team that I think Stephen A. and I both agree is, is not great. I don't think it's any threat to win the Western Conference this year, <sighs> which brings Neither me back do I. to Dwight. I'm completely on Kobe's side on this issue, though I wish Kobe would just let it go because, look, <laughs> the, the Lakers way overpaid for the fool's gold that is always Dwight Howard. And they almost did it again because they tried to re-recruit him again. The fool's gold that is Dwight Howard. And then Houston said, we got him. We're there. We're going to win a championship with Dwight. No, you're not going to win a championship if you're building around Dwight Howard. I love James Harden, and I think he has a chance to at least be in the MVP conversation this year. But Kobe was exactly right about Dwight being soft. He is soft, and he always was soft. And Byron Scott was exactly right yesterday when he summed it up by saying, Dwight never wanted to win nearly as badly as Kobe wanted to win. I mean, that's almost like a laughable statement to even put those two in the same winner's sentence. But Stephen A, we've been over and over this before, and I know this is how Kobe views Dwight. He was blessed with so many tangibles and so few intangibles. He, he, he has such size and such strength and such athletic ability, obviously, and so little burning desire. I'm talking about Kobe burning desire mm -hmm. to be great, to dominate in fourth quarters on both mm. ends of the floor, to dominate from the free throw line. We've been over and over this again, and it, the bitterness just spills out of Kobe mm -hmm. when they had their little clash. You're soft. And then Kobe went back to the huddle and continued to yell at Dwight or yell about Dwight because he's bitter about what Dwight wasn't. When Kobe, I, I think Kobe bought into the fool's gold that mm. we got a chance with Dwight here. And you know what? You didn't have a chance with Dwight. And you, for Kobe's sake, I hope you can just let it go, Kobe, because it is what it wasn't. Chip think, Bayless, no, that, that, I, we, 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 we were. We respectfully disagree. I think you're being very disrespectful to Dwight Howard. First of all, most people in, in league history don't have the will and the desire to win like a Kobe Bryant did. There's a reason that he's the only viable comparison to Michael Jordan in the modern day era because of that will to win. That's point number one. Point number two, when you talk about Dwight Howard being soft, the only thing to me that Dwight Howard has ever been done uh, that has ever done that can be comparable <clears throat> or, or, or warrants him being labeled soft was when he had the ordeal in Orlando where he couldn't make up his mind. He, he stayed and he wanted to go and all of this other stuff. That was at, and, and then gave away his power to the Orlando Magic only to force a trade or, you know, thereafter. It was utterly ridiculous. Uh, it made no sense. Um, and, and in regards to that, he deserved to be criticized for it. That's it. But a Dwight <clears throat> Howard on the basketball court calling him soft, I think that's going too far. I don't see anybody pushing Dwight Howard around. I don't see wow. anybody muscling him around. I don't see a guy that steps on the court and has been perceived by opponents as soft. His game offensively in the post area is certainly not polished. He'll never be confused with a Kareem or, or Kevin McHale or somebody like that. He just doesn't have the requisite skill set in the post offensively, which is why the dream of Lajuan along with Kevin McHale. He wanted to go to Houston so they could work on his game because he doesn't have that kind of skill set. So if you're saying that he's not the ultimate skilled big man, and by the way, he's about six nine and a half without his shoes. He's really not a seven-footer. But if you want to knock him, I say knock him because his game is limited offensively as a post player. He still has to develop that. But to sit there and accuse Dwight Howard of being soft, yeah, Kobe could say that because Kobe and his will to win, being a five-time champion, going at it the way that he does, and having the animosity that he has for Dwight Howard, that would be different. Even though when Dwight Howard was in L.A., he was still playing with a bad back. Let us not forget that. But to sit there and have <laughs> us, you, me, or anybody else call Dwight Howard soft, I can't go with that. Okay, well, can't time out. That. Time out. Yeah. So it's okay if Kobe calls him soft, but if I agree with Kobe that Dwight is soft, then I'm out of bounds. Is that what you just said? Because I, I, I think you're out of bounds with that because... 
Kobe's calling him soft because of the combination of animosity that Kobe has and because of what Kobe requires and Dwight didn't live up to in Kobe's eyes in L.A. He has that point. I'm saying when it comes from pundits, there are people on the outside looking in. If you're going to call Dwight Howard soft, do you know how many people in the NBA you could call soft if you're going to call Dwight Howard soft? Probably a, a few. I can call yeah. a few, and I do call yeah, a few soft a occasionally, few. but... Dwight more, has more never, than, more, okay. more than 50% of the league. Perhaps. More than 50% of the league. Okay, but look. Has, this is Dwight Howard, I, I a three-time defensive only player of the year. Nine and a half, six, ten, but, but Stephen A., look at the shoulders. Look at the ability. Look at the, the rebound numbers he can put up in his sleep. And tell me he hasn't underachieved for his career for what? For his physical gifts that he has. Tell me he hasn't underachieved. Skip, skip it. I don't believe he's underachieving. Here's why. He was a three-time defensive player of the year. That's number one. Number two, when he couldn't make it to, he made it to the finals one year, who did he lose to? Kobe, Gasol, Bynum and the crew. Number three, when he was in the Eastern Conference, you had LeBron and Cleveland, you had the big three in Boston with KG, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen mm -hmm. and those boys. That's number three. Number four, then he had the back injury. Before the back injury, he was the premier defensive player in the game, putting up 20 and 12. I'm, I'm, what are you talking, talking about? I'm not talking to Kobe Bryant. If you're watching yeah. Kobe, if you're up yet, yeah. please text that man and tell him he's wrong about what he just said. All right, uh, Stephen A., we, we have to move on. In, in regards to Kobe uh, Bryant, I'll take your advice, Skip Bayless. I'll let it go as well. We all Thank know you. I'm a bit biased I, about I one uh, Dwight Howard. But let's mention this. Julius Randle, because you mentioned the fact that he broke his leg. Um, he is the Lakers' highest draft pick. And we haven't had a draft pick that high in since, since James Worthy. Do you remember what happened to him his rookie season? 82, he broke his leg. Broke his leg as well, so hopefully... But that was like 70 games in. What yeah. are 77 games Let's in. hope that Julius yeah, can recover. I sure and have, so. Just as an illustrious career. Yeah. Uh, moving on to college football. The first of 